Okay, good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present to you today our work on uh, Leisure Alert. Uh, basically, the diversity you can get using Leisure Alert and also a long-term storage method for it. So why storing samples? Well, uh, basically everybody that has faced, you know, outbreak investigation that have been involved in finding the source of Legionella pneumophila uh, has been faced with this kind of situation. So on the clinical side, you have an aggregate of cases that all have the same sequence base type, in our case, ST1 here. And because of the delay in getting that information, the outbreak is declared a few weeks after the legionnaire disease cases are diagnosed. Now on the source side of things here, uh, cooling tower, let's say, you have an operator that have been doing very good surveillance. Uh, they have a positive results on that date. And that means that this tower was contaminated a week before with legionella. So it could very be the source of this outbreak. And because they have a positive samples here, they will disinfect their tower and make it clear. So when you have the outbreak declare, and when you go try to find a source, you will never identify that one as the source because at that point is not contaminated with Dijonet. It's clean, right? The only way you can actually identify this cooling tower as the source is if you have stored this leisure alert in some way. So we're going to talk about this today. So for this study, uh, basically finding what kind of festies you can have with Leisure Alert and finding a storage method, we based this study on 418 water samples that we collected over a course of 11 months, both from non-potable and potable water systems. For non-potable water systems, we had 24% positive rate with Leisure Alert. For potable water, 76%, we have very high positivity, positivity rate because we focused on two water systems that were chronically contaminated with Legionella. Now, with those Legionella packet, the positive Legionella packet, we isolated strains from those Legionella packet, like so. So we took the valid result, the Legionella that shows non normal well appearance, we made a composite of the positive well, and we plated that on GVPC plates. As you can see here, this is a valid result. And from the colonies that grew on that plate, we plated that on a plate with and without cysts. So we did this cysteine test. And the colonies, we sequenced base type one colony from each packet. We got a few invalid results for the non-potable water systems only five invalid results out of 165. That, that's about 3% of invalid results, which is in line with other studies. In four out of five cases of those invalid results, we had abnormal wells appearance, as you can see here. And in only one cases, did the isolates from the leisure alert packet grew on a plate without cysteine. So that was not Legionella, and we discarded that results. Again, this is in line with what have been published for Leisure Alert before. For 37 cases of non-potable water systems, we also perform standard culture on those uh, for 37 samples. In seven cases, the results were positive for both Leisure Alert and standard cultures. And for 23 cases, the res results were negative for both. Now, with the positive results, we type one colonies from the standard culture and one colonies from the ledger alert to see what kind of diversity we can get and if the results match. In six out of seven cases, we got ST1 for both. This came from one system that was contaminated with ST1, so we expected that results. And in one system, we got ST1 with standard culture and then ST3054 with Leisure Alert. So in six out of seven, it matched. Of course, in that case here, it can be postulated that actually you have both in the system and it's just by random chance that in one case we got ST1 and the other we got ST3054. We got also other STs with Leisure Alert, but in that case, we didn't either do standard culture or in that case, we actually uh, didn't get the positive results with the standard culture. For potable water systems, we really focus on two systems that were chronically contaminated with Legionella. 
uh, site six and site eight. Uh, and in both cases, we typed a lot of colonies, 22 for six, uh, site six and 48 for site eight, just to see the diversity we could get from that system. Uh, for site six, we got ST378 only, but for site eight, we got two STs, ST1427 and ST2859. And in that case, what we did, we picked one leisure alert packet and we tested individual colonies from individual wells to see what kind of diversity you have in individual wells. In that case, we picked mostly ST2859. Only in one instance, in one large well, we got 1427. So we can get some diversity here from leisure alert packet. ST2859, interestingly, it's a subspecies Frizzeri, and that prompted us in testing if we can detect you know, other subspecies using, using leisure alert. So we tested in vitro if we can get Pasquale and Raffaele, and we confirmed that leisure alert can detect those two subspecies as well. Because we had so much ST2859 isolated from that trace, we uh, try to see if we have variants in there in that ST2859 uh, population by doing single nucleotide polymorphism analysis using whole genome sequencing. We use KSNP3 to uh, do that SNPs-based analysis. And we, uh, we tested isolates from different wells just to make sure if we get diversity in the composite of the wells. Here I'm showing you that for ST2859, there's two populations, variants A and variant B, that differs by 40 SNPs. And if you do, uh, if you test a large well, you get both variants. A small wells, you get only one variance. But then from the composites, you can get also both variants. So Leisure Alert is able to pick up diversity that most likely represent the diversity of population of Legionella within water systems. For storage, we tested multiple different conditions. I'll summarize that quickly. If you just store the packets at four degrees Celsius, you get about the survivability or culturability for five months. And after that, you don't get really colonies out of it. If you just store it at 40 room temperature or minus 20 as is, you don't really get survivability at, at all. But if you add glycerol either directly in the leisure media, or if you resuspend the the, the pellet that comes from the leisure alert media into AYEs and add glycerol, you get actually very good survivability as can be shown here. So this is a glycerol sample either at minus 20 and minus 80. And you can see that after 12 months, you have good growth on uh, CYE plates. Uh, the other conditions, you don't really get growth. So it's not a very good storage method. In conclusions, we can detect, you know, uh, subspecies Pneumophila, Fraseri, Pasquarelli, and Raffaelli using uh, Leisure Alert. You can detect a variable, uh, large diversity of uh, STs us using Leisure Alert. It seems that by doing a composite uh, of the wells that are positive, you can pick up diversity uh, as well, and that most likely represent diversity that you have in the water systems. And by simply adding 10% glycerol to the leisure media that you get from positive wells and storing below minus 20, you get very good survivability after a year and probably much longer than that. That will allow historical investigation of samples. So this work was done by Sarah Matthews and Illiston Valer Valerino Reyes in collaboration with the group of Michel Prévost from Polytechnique Montreal. This was funded by NSERC Alliance Grant, which was in part funded by IDEX. Thank you very much for listening to me.